Let's go to Andrew in Atlanta, Georgia, home of the Braves that lost. What's up, Andrew? <laughs> hey, Dr. John. How are you doing? Just taking my digs in before the Astros. Uh, they're not looking great right now. So, what's up, man? <laughs> well, I got um, a weird one. So, you've called, hey, you called the right show. <laughs> you called the right, right? show. So um, back in September, we went on a Disney trip with the whole family. It was a paid-for thing by my mother-in-law. Oh, gosh. Um, I'll, I'll give you a couple red flags. Uh, we were all staying in the same Airbnb. <laughs> and, Wait, hold on. Um, Do you all have kids? Yes. Okay. There were two, two are mine and my wife's, and the other two are my sister-in-law's. Um, and they're all between the ages of four and seven. <laughs> So what can um, possibly go wrong? Awesome. Everything. Uh, <laughs> so, the all other right, part of the trip was they wanted us all to ride together down, which my wife refused. She's like, no, we're driving separate. Hey, you married well. Okay. Continue. Yeah. She's pretty smart. Um, <laughs> so we get down there and everything's kind of going okay. Um, and then we have an issue one night. Um, my sister-in-law loves to go from zero to a hundred for nothing. Like absolutely nothing. I've watched her scream at my mother-in-law over stupid stuff at Christmas. You know, we're trying to have a nice time and we're getting screamed at because the potatoes weren't the way she wanted or whatever. Right. Um, it's just a, a normal thing to, to watch. And it's, um, you know, I've kept my mouth shut Been married for eight years, kept my mouth shut. Right. Um, my wife and her go back and forth over a toy of all things, which my wife was just trying to say, we need to find, you know, our son's version of this. Cause he had, you know, her son's version of that. And she was like screaming bloody murder. Kids were done. They wanted to go home. My wife was done. She wanted to go home. I told myself, let's just wait. Let's calm down. High tension, right? I'm trying to be the optimist, high tension. Let's just calm down. If she does it again, let me handle it. Like she's a bully. She won't let you talk any, t- say anything, you know, when you're trying to express whatever it is you're trying to say in the moment, like, let me deal with it. I've been dealing with those my whole life. I've got this. Well, the next evening, she starts it again, but she's starting to badmouth my wife in front of my kids while we're at the pool. Like, we're in the pool. There's a pool in the back of the Airbnb. We're all sitting on the patio, and um, she starts saying something. So I just looked at her, and I said, I wouldn't say anything. And she just looked across the patio at me, and she was like, excuse me? And I was like, I wouldn't wouldn't say anything. You know, I'm just telling you, I, I, I wouldn't start. She's like... She's like, I wouldn't start. I was like, do you want to do this right now? She said, yeah, I want to do this right now. So I called her a bully. And she lost it. She absolutely lost it. Screaming out there, all kinds of obscenities, freaking the freak out. The kids are all stunned. They're all in the pool. They're all stunned. And, um, you know, she storms in. And I'm just like, okay, that was an interesting reaction. Well, her six foot four, 350 to 400 pound boyfriend steps out of the house. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I'm sitting in the corner of the patio. Um, there's a table in front of me, and now he is pulling up a chair right in front of me. Like, Dude, I this is move. when you sweep the leg. Did you not watch Karate Kid 1? Well, he was sitting. He, he was in a oh, chair. Okay. I was in a chair. That's fair. I'm all about de-escalating, you know? And But he comes up, he gets right in my face, and he says, you want to see a bully? And I burst out <laughs> laughing. I burst out laughing. I look over at my mother-in-law, and I'm like, is this guy kidding? Like, are we serious? Uh, by now, my wife had re-entered, you know, the patio, and um, she was coming to get the kids after she heard the screaming, and she saw what was going on. She tried to, um, you know, put herself between me and him and kind of push him back, and he stood up, and she's telling him, get out of the way. You know, we're not scared of you. We're leaving. Get out of our way. Um, she pushes the table out of the way, and when she does that, he reaches down and pulls the chair out from under me. Um, I stand up, but he puts me in a headlock. So I'm still sitting there trying to de-escalate. Um, I'm waiting to see what happens. It's not a tight headlock, so I don't feel scared or intimidated or anything at the moment yet. And uh, finally, he lets me go. We pack all of our stuff. We go get our own hotel. We leave the house. Okay, you fast forward me to right now. How can I help you right now? So right now, so after that happens, um, the in-laws sent my wife this crazy text about how she needs to deal with her hatred in her heart and they never even got a thank you for the trip and all this stuff. This is the night this all happened that we got in the hotel. Sure. Um, and, um, so bring me to right now. Know, How they, can I help you right now? So, 
you know, we have not communicated with them since this happened. Absolutely. Um, they, they've opted they, out. They, Everybody's opted out. Right. They, they chose the other side. They went to Disney and had fun the next day with this guy that cool. man handled their son-in-law. Um, so going into the holidays, my, you know, a, we already know that's not happening. Um, so a, how do we communicate to our kids? Like when they start asking, Hey, when are we going to their house and stuff? Like, Hey, that's, that's not happening. Um, and B what's our best foot forward. And I mean, they've opted out, but should we say something like, Hey, you were wrong for this or should we just let it go? No, I mean, okay. So number one, I mean, the way you told the story, you had some bravado. You waltzed in. I've, I've been handling this my whole life. I got this. And then you didn't. And so part of me, you invited it in. You entered into a conflict that wasn't yours between two sisters, and it ended poorly. Okay? And so I think there's something to be learned about if you're going to say you better recognize, then you might get recognized, right? And then the second thing is it went sideways and you all left. You should have left. And it's devastating when we can't, you can't talk something out, right? It's devastating when um, parents don't say, hey, that is unacceptable. And the, your in laws are clearly trying to prop up a picture of a happy family. And they're willing to put thousands and thousands of dollars towards this picture. It's a myth. It's a fantasy for whatever reason. My guess is they know what a train wreck your sister-in-law is. They probably have problems with you. And they're trying to recreate a Norman Rockwell painting in real life. And it's not real. And so when somebody walks out of the picture, regardless of why they left, they are the bad guy because they left the picture. And so – the next day, everybody woke up, the sun came up, and y'all were the ones that were gone. So y'all are the easy bad guys, okay? Here's why that doesn't matter. Y'all left. You did the right thing. I would not have talked to them since then. I would have let them, if they choose to re-engage us, great. But we put our boundaries up, and we're out. And when the kids ask, you say – Remember Aunt So and So when she was screaming and yelling? And remember when her big boyfriend um, put his hands on dad? We only go places where it's safe for the whole family. And so we're not going to go there. That's it. That is it. And we're not going to, we don't have to have a bunch of other conversations. My promise to you is the kids are going to think way less of this than y'all are. And my also promise is for your wife, this isn't, this is the world she grew up in. And so she's probably been going back and saying she's sorry and fixing the the family dysregulation for a long time. And it's easy to walk out in the heat of a moment. But as time goes on, it's like, well, you know, and dad was and mom was and sister was really. And so that's probably been her whole life. And so y'all are going to have to decide to hold firm on this and choose safety and choose joy and choose laughter. Right. Holidays are too short, man. They're too precious. I, I guess yeah. here's what I'm struggling with. One, I mean, you stepped into it and it happened. Two, I don't know. I don't know what you're lamenting or sad about. Or did you, did you, you took a stand and nobody stood with you, I guess is the challenge here. But I don't know what you're upset about. It seems like it's all played out perfectly. You don't have to be around these in-laws who aren't seeing the world clearly. And you don't have to be around <laughs> an unsafe sister-in-law and her boyfriend like I don't, I don't know what you're upset about well you know there's the you know reconciliation and the, you know like you can't re- mean, I'm not, you cannot reconcile with people who don't want to be reconciled with so we should wait for them to come around and realize they were kind of being stupid in the in the moment rather than point out to them don't point yeah. what last time you pointed out things how did that end it ended with you in the armpit of a 400 pound man <laughs> right yeah. like they have no interest in seeing anything other than their perspective yes you pointing this things out will not help the situation at all you choosing to not carry their bricks around you choosing to find joy you choosing to make the best of a holiday season, maybe the first one in eight years, it's going to be one of peace and not anger and not 
accelerated heart rates and you dancing around and trying not to set off sister-in-law and trying to make sure your wife is a, maybe for the first time. You ought to just get a hotel with a pool and let your kids remember the time Santa showed up at the hotel and just have a good three-day weekend. And you know what I mean? Reimagine the whole thing and, and, and have that be something beautiful and fun, not lamenting. Got it. Does that make sense? Yeah. It is an utter waste of your time to try to come up with the right word. Is, I mean, literally, think through this through. Is there something you're going to say and your sister-in-law is going to be like, no way, I never thought of that. Thanks, no. Andrew. Like, no, it's never going to happen. You know what I mean? Or like uh, her giant boyfriend is going to be like, hey, man, listen, when you call my girlfriend a bully, you're right. She's rude, and I'm. We're going to counseling. Is that going to happen? No, it's not going to happen. He did what he what boyfriends do, right? And yeah. and so on, so on down the line. It's it, here's what it, it, it feels disorienting because you feel powerless. You can't solve this problem. And as you said at the very beginning of the call, you have a history of solving these type of problems, of wading in, being the calm person in the storm, saying the right thing, and everyone's like, "You're right." And this is one you can't solve. And so that means you have to dust your sandals off, or as the great Jay-Z says, brush your shoulders off and walk on, man. Right? Mm -hmm. You don't sound like you believe me. Well, no. So so I just – the other thing, you know, my wife wife sees a therapist every week Uh and uh, has been unpacking this too. And, you know, there's a codependent relationship there that she recognizes and she's with her mom and she's, you know, been dissecting that. But – you know, the part part of the hard thing too is like, you know, she feels sometimes like when she leaves work, she wants to call her mom. And she wants to do absolutely, that, it's not, absolutely. It's not out of hey, I have joy in this. It's out of that relationship they have. It's no, it's so, it's, it's a, codependency in its in its root form is an addiction. It's a love addiction, as the great Pia Melody says. Hmm. She's addicted to the chemicals she gets when she creates a fantasy and tries to uphold her side of it, and yeah. occasionally. Her mom is really kind, and occasionally her mom is funny and tells her a hilarious story, and then she falls under the illusion, that's my real mom. There she is. I just need to do more of this so that real mom stays out more, and then real mom actually shows up, and real mom is dysfunctional, and real mom is predatory, and real mom uses your wife as a prop in her play. All the while, your daughter's asking herself the same question she's been asking since she was a little girl. What is it? What's so bad about me? What's wrong with me? That mommy won't fully connect with me. And that's not a question kids need to ask. That's the adult question. And so, yes, it's totally natural for your wife to just want to pick up the phone and call her mom. Totally natural. It's totally natural for your wife to be heartbroken and weep over the holidays season this year totally normal that's just grief the gap between what we wanted and what we hoped for and what reality gave us that's where y'all are and then you have to ask yourself like many callers on this show like i have to ask myself what are we going to do next are we just going to sit and wallow in this or are we going to choose joy are we going to construct something new that's going to be fun and we're going to give our kids a wild great time we get to pick. We get to pick. And one, like for me, in my house, we're going to choose joy every single time. <sighs> Sorry, man. Brush your shoulders off, brother. Move on to the next. <laughs>